Splash. Nice. You're probably like most. When you look at a flight sim like DCS, you're mostly interested in the high-tech dogfights with extremely capable modern fighter jets. But DCS has a side of it that goes even deeper. See, it also has aircraft from different eras, World War II, Cold War, and modern day, on some servers like Enigma's Cold War, and there's a few others as well. An aircraft that might not stand a chance in a modern setting can be an extremely capable killer once in a pool of its fellow Cold War flyboys. This is where a unique aircraft comes in. One that's fast. One that's deadly. One that's a Dorito. This thing was made in 1967 by none other than those pesky Swedes, and it was still in use until I was 10 years old. A fast, low-flying, get the frick out sorta guy, the Sab Viggen. Did I pronounce it correctly? I don't care enough to Google it. He's not staying around. You fly in, you hit bad thing, you turn on the burner, and while your pursuers go Mach 1.0, you go home at Mach 1.0 insane. Gosh, this thing is fast. 1.35? This thing can go Mach 1.35? Holy. Can it hit 1.4? 1 1.4! 1 <laughs> it's hilarious to get a radio call of a nearby bandit, drop your fuel tank, burn into the objective, strike it, then just blast your way out while he's still searching for where you were a minute ago. It's just that fast. You'll be constantly outrunning anyone who tries to chase you because if you're flying in thick air or even thin air up high, you are considerably faster than anyone else on the server. Uh-oh. 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 See, this makes me feel better. You know, about myself as a pilot. Oh no. Oh, and he, oh, he did it. <laughs> Why are all the F5s so wiggly? F5s are the new F16 pilots. Yep. Yep, F5s are, uh, F16 pilots are now l no longer the dumbest. Good old Viggy also has some of the most unique set of weaponry and mission capabilities of any aircraft in DCS 2. I was surprised when one of the strongest capabilities of the Viggen is its ability to go low and fast, so it works great as a Cold War ship killer. You can mount these giant RBO-4 anti-ship cruise missiles that also create a terrifyingly cool atmosphere when they get launched from multiple planes at once. It's, it's pretty neat. There's also a type of missile I didn't even know existed until now, the RBO-5 remote-controlled missile. Once within 10 kilometers of the target, you pull the trigger, missile release, missile has a bright red marking flare on the back of it, you guide the missile with a four-way control scheme from inside your cockpit for the 40 seconds total that the battery on the missile can actually last. They look like Star Wars too. this is a real thing. High drag bombs are super fun too. You grab the Viggen and you fly it directly over whatever you want to kill, dropping little bomblets along the way with little cute parachutes. The little, little parachutes bringing death down upon the enemy, but very cute and softly. Yo, look at that. That was sick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. Oh, that was so cool. Cluster munitions with really interesting gliders so that you don't have to fly directly over the target yourself. This would be good for maybe a, I don't know, a cluster of SAMs or something. I mean, check it, it's, it's so cool. I don't, I don't know, it's just, what? That's real. Oh, and I almost forgot, the coolest part of all, Viggins are designed to land on poor quality or shortened runways, and with a fighter jet, your fastest form of acceleration is your engine. And if there's a way to reverse that, acceleration backwards becomes deceleration forwards. This means 
You can stop on a dime, land comfortably on small road bases, and be the first person off the active runway on Hoggett. You reverse thrust right now, you won't. Go, go! <laughs> it doesn't do anything up here. Uh oh. I have to have weight on the front wheel. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> no. Yo, he actually did it, dude. Yeah, so this is a camera of the missile. It's the, it's the... Th oh, fuck! <laughs> That's why I was, be my RWR was beep, 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 And you're just like, ha, ha, beeps. Ha, <laughs> ha, beeps, honey. <laughs> In DCS, aircraft like the Vigan are created by different developers. The Vigan is by the same people who, well, made this. If you didn't know yet, Heatbler basically made the coolest aircraft simulator I've ever played. It's, it's sick. So you could infer that the Vigan is also filled with extremely detailed wear and tear and very cool night lighting as well. Th there is something about the sound of the throttle as you go, as you just chonk through the detents. The wings, they, they creak under load when pulling high AOA at fast speeds, or the RWR speaking its alien Cthulhu language as I fail to understand anything it's ever said to me. I gotta admit though, it's not hard for me to like this plane. Its entire doctrine, its meaning in life is to fly low and fast. If you've seen my episodes on PvP in this game, you know that I like caressing the tops of the pines as I go inverted over a hill, so this just fits it for me. I rarely jump into VR for DCS as I have a sweaty face and the Quest 2s aren't waterproof, but sitting in the one-to-one -one skill cockpit, able to dodge trees and go under power lines with a fighter jet at Mach 1 point is something really fast is an experience I feel every PC gamer should have at some point, and it's just, wow. Mountains turn from mere polygons on my two-dimensional monitor to enormous beasts with unmeasurable mass. Maybe my immersion of playing games in 2D is just capped or something. Maybe becoming a professional gamer for a living has made me numb to 2D gaming because man, when it comes to VR, this game is unbelievable. As I've said in, in before in VTOL VR videos as well, VR feels like it was made for flight sims. You can do Beat Saber, you can play uh, Uno in VR chat or shoot guns in H3 VR and VR is pretty dang good at that. Those are the best examples of what to do, but damn, damn. There is nothing like forming up next to a buddy and actually sensing the scale of just how high off the ground you are, how large your aircraft is, how exactly far away his aircraft is. It's undeniably instinctive and something I think we gamers won't be able to get over for a while, or at least I won't. Holy, oh my, oh my God. In the Vigan, you do have to watch your fuel, run the afterburner too often, and you'll be running on fumes in five minutes. But as soon as someone gets on your ass, if you've saved up the fuel, you've got the speed to borderline ignore whatever's behind you. Shit, you can actually go so fast that if you're constantly changing direction while running your afterburner, unless a bandit perfectly tracks you and leads your turns, which hasn't happened yet in the week I've been flying PvP, you can usually just fly right past them. And if they've got to make a turn to chase you down, you're already long gone. I've gotten into turn fights, decided to leave because I'm a Dorito and Doritos can't make two turns before they slow down to the speed of my brain in senior year math class. Sorry, Miss Robinson. I'm too busy thinking about which Titan I should level up in my favorite new game, Titanfall 2, baby. Best game, overshadowed by Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1. I was in a turn fight, just decided to tell the guy, hey, um, yeah, nah, <laughs> it was gone. The dude just, he just immediately gave up chasing me, did not even turn in. So if you're new to DCS, I don't know if I'd suggest this one to you. It's a certain style of gameplay that is definitely really risky, requires a bit more knowledge and awareness of the flight sim than most of the jets in this game, as well as requires a ton of patience with both the learning process and the long flights to the AO sometimes. But there is something about its weirdness that was just refreshing when giving it a go. There's definitely some magic to it when you're flying around, going into a combat scenario, and you have fun before you even get to the combat by carving through mountainsides and surfing through the valleys, popping up, going inverted, and landing your rocket strike on the first try. There's something good about that. There's something really 
cool about that sort of experience that's unique to DCS and sort of unique to this module. Anywho, if you like this video and you'd like to check out more DCS, there's more on my channel. I have a whole playlist of DCS videos. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. No, calm down, plane. Calm down, plane. No, no, no. No, 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 plane. No! <laughs> oh! Yo, you just drifted that plane. How? Wait, am I fine? Hold up. Reverse Yo. thrust. <laughs> am I fine? <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Oops, a little bit of a wheelie. No, go full throttle. <laughs> Shit, I might be stuck in the mud. Nope, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna have to do. I'm I'm fine. No Dude, way. look at the tire tracks. <laughs>